I don't know if I told you yesterday, my manager, he had come up to me uh, saying that, you know, it's now mandatory for us to be in five days a week. Uh, yeah. And um, like I said, when he told me that, he almost like was trying to see like, oh, what do you think about this thing? You know, now that what's your reaction? About, like, yeah. yeah, what's your reaction? So I said, oh, I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. I don't know what you want me to say beyond that. <laughs> what you, exactly, yeah. 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 I didn't say anything to that, but then he was almost trying to see if that Age. works for me. And then I was like honest about it. All I said was, I know I, did, I don't understand it, but it is what it is. I don't understand it because on the one hand, you're saying you want to increase productivity by bringing people in. But then you're also saying that we've been productive these past few months and we're knocking it out of the park so you're giving us the credit of working well flexibly which is you know on the hybrid uh coming into the office a few days a week and then working from home maybe a couple of days a week but now you're saying no we need people out here because we need to be more productive so it's conflicting and i just said that because you're saying that it's confusing to me and i don't understand it um, it's funny because I don't think I would have had, I, I would have felt confident enough to say all these things before I had that security of a green card. I'll be very Oh yeah, honest. I mean, that's a whole different conversation. That's yeah. like, if you want to go there, it's like, yeah, when you're, when you're on a freaking work visa, you're like on the hook, right? Because you're mm-hmm. like, shit, if you fire me, my ass is done for. But uh, yeah, right now, but but see, I mean, the company that you work for now is also, I mean, they're not abusive in that sense. We've spoken no. about this. No, they're they not. Work, yeah, work visa or not, it's not like they're gonna, you know, abuse the opportunity that they know you have nowhere to go. They're not that sort of a company. But but what did your boss say? Like when you said that? Nothing. Oh, this morning when I went into the office, he comes over and he's like, uh, "Oh yeah, man. Yesterday, you know, our conversation. I'm sorry." If it came across as, you know, abrasive in any way. And I'm like, no, that's fine. Like, I didn't think it was abrasive. I think you were trying to clarify what your stance was and why you had that stance. And he was also saying how, you know, this is a directive from above him. It's not like he wants to do this. It's not his call. So I, I understand that. But at the same time, I, you, you wanted an honest opinion of it. And I, I wanted to be open with you. Now, just, I don't think we might have agreed initially with what that meant. But that's okay. I think we're... <laughs> Like, I don't, I didn't take it personally. I, I know it's business. And that's where he was like, oh, yeah, it's, it's not just business. You know, we have to have the team together. And and all that time, I'm just like, roll, I'm, in my head, I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, yeah, whatever team and all this. You know, it's nice that you think that. But fine. Like, no, no hard feelings. We have the conversation. We're done. But even being able to have that conversation and kind of put him on the back foot with an opinion that isn't like, oh, yeah, whatever you say is correct, felt so alien to me. Because I'm not used to doing that at work. I do that with other interactions where I have nothing on the line. But not to do it in an assertive way that isn't aggressive felt weird. And uh, in a weird way felt good because... I mean, that's kind of been my sense the moment I moved to Canada, right? Like Yeah. Like, I'm not an asshole, but if if I see that it's something that I disagree with, or even worse, like, you're just messing around, I'm going to call you out on it. And I don't care if you're upper management. It's happened a few times, and there's several factors, right? There's uh, job security. There's the security of that people in general around you are ethically and morally not bankrupt. So if you are trying to make an actual valid point they will probably hear and not be biased and i think the last one is in my case having the backing of your boss not for nonsense but like if you make sense he has your back when you have all of those it puts you in a position where if you see something that you strongly disagree with even if the person at the other end is the vp you you think you have a voice and you say it people might not give a shit and they won't listen and be like oh that asshole but, <laughs> right. but you're not fearful of making that statement and making yourself heard which i will say that in the u.s when i worked and i was on a you know first a student visa than a work visa that was never the case because it's like your ass is on the line 
So yeah, yeah but was... uh, I mean, the whole hybrid thing. I mean, to be honest, uh, it's kind of sad that they're taking it away from you, uh, because yeah. I mean, I my company is pretty old school, and I drive into work every day, mm -hmm. uh, like since I think August of two thousand twenty one. Like every day, there hasn't been a, a moment uh, when they were like, oh, you can just work from home. It, it doesn't work that way. Unless there's some medical appointments and stuff, sure, they have the flexibility and people are nice about it, but you are expected to be at the office every day. And it's a pain in the ass, dude. Like, my drive is not a joke. Like, I drive 45 kilometers one way. You know, I refuse to live in bumfuck middle of nowhere. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I will live in like, downtown Toronto and I will make that commute. But it's such a pain. It's so it's so not productive. Like, I kid you not, I almost didn't want to record today because I'm just so overwhelmed. Like, By what? What part of it? Was it the drive back that was, like, there was a lot of traffic or what part of it? No, it's it? just, it's just things start accumulating. So I am somebody that is a neat freak, right? Like, I like my house to be in a certain order. Mm -hmm. And my house has not been in order and I haven't been getting the opportunity. Like, it's just like every day there's something. I come back at 5.30. By the time I'm settled in, it's 6. I get everything ready, like my gym stuff, my food, everything portioned out, and my all of that cleaned and stuff by 7. And then I have basically 3 hours, like 7 to 10, right? Where I can either relax or I have to do stuff. So like, for example, yesterday, I was literally meal prepping till like 11 o'clock. Uh, today, I was like, my entire apartment is a shit show because I'm trying to figure out my, you know, closet situation. My clothes are all over the place and I have to get ready for tomorrow. And then I agreed to do the podcast and I'm like, fuck, yeah. like, oh. And you know, like uh, right now it's, nighttime over there so you know once you're done with this it's pretty much switch off and get ready to it's do it again done. tomorrow yeah and and you know what's gonna happen which is really shitty is like i know myself i will not be able to sleep because this is like overwhelming me so i'm actually gonna stay up and do it and by the time i go to bed it's gonna be midnight past midnight and then i have to wake up at five and then tomorrow entire day i'm gonna be drowsy and tired as fuck yeah, uh, I did see something about, I don't know if this is happening in Canada, but are they, over here, they were looking at implementing the whole four-day work week thing. That shit ain't happening in Canada, dude. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, not it isn't for everyone. I know it's the idea has been floated. Technically, my company has a hybrid work policy in place. It's still in place, but there's also this push, like you said, the old school way, where there's certain people who, need that presence on the floor or you know for us it's because we work in an assembly uh assembly line type situation same here yeah you need uh bodies on the floor you need representation from different departments and it's very hard to coordinate and i personally don't get it uh because i have seen I, i've had conversations with people about the same thing you know from the perspective of having a kid in daycare yeah. Just as one example, not that I plan to pull my kid out of daycare, but there are, there are situations where if he is sick or and the daycare will just wash their hands of that. They'd be like, yeah, he's sick. You need to come get this kid. Yeah. And that was kind of the disagreement I had with some of the people at work was in that situation, I have to bring my kid home. The kid has to be home mm -hmm. and I need to be at home with the kid. Right. More, because I had a flexible, I had a flexible position. I could do that. Now, what they're telling me is in that situation, there are certain circumstances in which you can work from home. We'll allow it. But if it's happening where your kid is now sick for like the week, you're going to have to start taking PTO. And to me, that makes no sense. I can work from home. It's not like I'm, I want to sit at home and do nothing. I can actually get stuff done. I but, don't think they're going to ever enforce that. I don't think they can force you to take PTO. I think we're way too down the rabbit hole uh, of remote work to yeah. mandate such nonsense at the end of the day if you need me to keep working yeah. here there are certain conditions that i'm I, I would expect and if you're threatening me with stuff like you know mandatory pto and all that you know i can walk and if that and they don't want people yeah. walking i know that as well 
it, it's funny because you know sometimes companies will be like oh we don't get the cream of talent like well you're not going to get the cream of talent because hey, you're not ready to pay those kind of salaries mm-hmm. all right so already you've chopped up a lot of talent because they can get hired by big ass you know companies like google and alphabet and meta for top dollar two you don't provide them with flexibility you know the hybrid system there are companies that are willing to offer that from the get-go it's on your contract when you're being onboarded mm-hmm. so and then they expect and then you know the worst part for i think companies like your and mine because we're both mechanical engineering background is that we work in well what is basically a factory and then never downtown they're in the middle of nowhere i think yours is not as bad but mm-hmm. mine is and you know it's not just the 2 hours i lose a day on the commute but it's also the fucking cost like yeah the gas dude it's not just the gas that's the part i tried to explain to my boss it's like you know i spend $1000 out of my salary per month on my car because i have to commute to work because i live downtown toronto i have street cars i have the subway and i have buses anybody who lives in downtown toronto does not i repeat does not need a car and that's why parking spots are so hard so if you do get a car you have a lease amount that you're paying which is like 250 dollars that i pay per month Mm -hmm. which is actually a great deal considering the interest rates right now i got them like you know two years ago so 250 for that then most condos here will charge you another 250 for parking because that is not included in your rent that's 500 bucks right there insurance in toronto is through the roof so if you have history history driving then a decent insurance is another 250 bucks mm. it's actually 300 so then you're 750 and then you spend another two to three hundred dollars depending on the price of gas which sometimes goes bonkers a thousand dollars a thousand dollars for a car that you use only to commute to work right that's twelve thousand dollars a year which is almost like sixteen seventeen thousand dollars uh you know before tax the other uh, narrative that comes is like oh well why don't you find something close by i'm like dude you think my job is the only thing in my entire existence you want me to move my entire life to where i work are you not like my job is a part of my life i cannot yeah. live that i need some level of social life my mental yeah. health is at stake yeah oh 100 100 percent like those small towns there's nothing nothing no and you, uh, you're preaching to the choir at this point because it's <laughs> different <laughs> yeah it's a totally different situation if you are married if or have a partner and you exactly you, well, you're yeah, kind yeah. of settled because then you're getting the nice uh if you're renting it's way cheaper to rent if you're buying a house it's probably much cheaper to own than in a bigger city uh, and you also then have something to go home to every day where you just want to relax. But yeah. if you're in that situation where you're meeting I'm people, sure. looking to meet people, socialize, do things, you know, after 5 p.m., yeah. your options are so limited. And I remember even um, when it came to dating and actually meeting people, I tried doing that. I tried the whole online dating thing in the smaller town yeah. that I was in. And it was the options are so limited. I mean, that's that goes without saying it's just i don't know for me it's i rather do the commute uh, you get used to it but yeah. at the same time it's like a lot of people try and put the excuse that oh just live closer or it's really not that big a deal no it's expensive it's a lot of time and money um, yeah but i will say though if i work every day from home i will also still lose my mind i See, I, 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 do I don't disagree with you there because I know people who don't have offices at all and they've yeah. just been, they live in some other city and work for some company that whose headquarters is nowhere nearby. Yeah. So they don't have an office to go to. And I don't want that. Like, I, I, I think it'll be harder to do that. What I, what I also don't want is for you to tell me when and when I cannot go in. Yeah. You know, that is the problem for me is I... the specificity of it as far as, you tell me like you know come in three times a week no problem i can come in three times a week but you tell me the specifics of it hey you got to be here monday tuesday wednesday and then take thursday friday off 
maybe a little less flexible with that i'm okay i can manage that but if you're telling me now that no this you have to be here five days a week that's a problem for me move move into tech leave mechanical engineering behind move into tech and you can work i actually more like painting. what i do <laughs> so that's the thing. i like what i do i just don't like that it has to be near a factory and you know <laughs>